Let us help you reach your peak in retirement. It's time for Retirement Elevated with Sean Lee. Welcome back into the podcast. It's Retirement Elevated with Sean Lee and myself. Episode number 90, Sean. We're moving right along here on these, getting close to the big 100. And uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool that we've done this many podcasts. But we're going to talk decision-making impediments this go around. For some people, the biggest problem with their financial plan isn't that they make the wrong decision. It's often that they just fail to make any decision, right? So we're going to talk right. about some things that, that roadblock us a bit. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Just yeah. enjoying the summertime with the good, fam. Good, good. Uh, do you think that's an accurate statement? We roadblock ourselves when oh, it comes to oh, finances? I 100% agree on that. Yeah. It's, yeah, there's a, and there's a lot of reasons for it. Yeah. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's the old saying, fish or cut bait? Right. Sometimes you got to fish, uh, just fish or cut bait. Uh, if you're if you're a fisherman, you know that deal, right? You got to either toss the line out there, or you got to cut it, and you know get on about your day, go and do something else, whatever the case is, right? Make a decision. Sometimes we have to take the best amount of information we have, and then just make a call, right? Make something happen. Exactly. So too many decisions to make is the first place that we kind of roadblock ourselves. Uh, we start going, I got a this, and I got a that. And this oh, and that. Yeah. Oh man, I don't. You know, and I think DIYers of the last several years, we've we've talked about this often on the podcast. That you know, it's been pretty easy if you're growing your wealth the last number of years up until 22. You know, to to grow that money, right? So the decision making process has maybe been a little easier. But mm-hmm. when you get closer to retirement, whether it's a bad economy or a bad market like we're facing right now or not. There's a heck of a lot more decisions you have to make when you get closer to retirement, and you kind of go, "Oh crap, I didn't realize all that." Oh yeah, I mean, and so a lot of this stuff that we're going to talk about today comes with lack of clarity, and and you think about there's too many decisions to make. Okay. Well, right. that be, that can become overwhelming because you don't have clarity on what your roadmap really looks like. Right. And, and you've got it. You got to think. Well, oh my gosh, this is all coming down to my retirement planning. Well. I'm going to retire in a couple of years. When should I take Social Security, Sean? I've heard, I, I hear the radio tell me one thing. I hear, you know, my friends tell me another thing. I'm looking at it on online, and then there's all these choices and options that I can make. Mm-hmm. And should I take a spousal benefit? If you have um, a pension, on my pension, mm-hmm. and should I, you know, what, what should I do when it comes to all these different aspects? Whether how am I going to generate income? What are the sources of income? Life insurance, to have Life, it or not have it, you know. Exactly. How do we factor in tax planning? You know, that's a big a big thing that people don't really think about a whole lot when it comes to planning. They're like, oh, yeah, now I have to – there's some there's some strategy around how I can control my taxes. Mm-hmm. Well, they don't. They just don't think about that. And for, for some people, it's really hard to know where to start when you have to make all of these decisions. Yep. In a short period of time. Well, we go to work. We we you know we've we've been conditioned get a job. Uh, you know, obviously we don't do the forty fifty year thing in a job anymore like it used to be. But still, we get a job. We go there. We open a four hundred one k. We pump money into it, or we have money in the bank. Boom, that's it. That's the only decisions I have to make. Right. Exactly. Uh, and and at some point, you got to make a whole lot more of them. So. You got to think about some some of these things, and then that's when we start to kind of roadblock ourselves up a little bit. Uh, so then maybe we start doing some research. Okay, so that's roadblock number two, and we start looking here and there and here and there, and it's like, oh man, <laughs> the 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 info never stops. And unfortunately, we live. I feel more of an in a, in a disinformation age than an information age. The internet could be an amazing thing, but unfortunately, like a lot of stuff, we we've uh, kind of made it a bit perverse. And the fact that there's so much stuff that you are checking out that you're just not sure if it's real or not, you know. Yeah, who do you who do you trust? I mean, you can get online, you can Google anything, and right. three billion hits come up in the matter of seconds. Or and less. often the top ones are paid things that maybe do take you down the wrong path because they're paying for your eyeballs, your clicks. It, exactly, and, and it's it's to sell their product. It's to right, wrong, or indifferent, right? It, yeah, and then you go talk once again. You talk to your neighbor, and then you talk to whoever. You listen to the radio. You watch TV. You coworker, do your coworker, you cousin Eddie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all these different sources. They all have difference of opinions, and you're like, well, maybe I should look at that. I, I should look that up. Maybe I yeah. should research this. And and then you get into a into a situation where you've got so much information that's polarizing on both sides. Yeah. Yep. That then you're frozen. So so you go back to the no decision roadblock and you go, well, I'm just going to do nothing. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, for those, if you're if you're a fan of the vacation films, Cousin Eddie is not the person you want to get information <laughs> from. <laughs> um, but you know, you were mentioning the neighbor thing, and it made me think of something. I was talking with a buddy of mine a couple of weeks ago, and he said. Uh, he was talking to me. He said, "Hey, you talk about financial stuff with people all the time." He's like, "My my neighbor's going to, um, you know, he's expecting, you know, this downturn that we're we're going through." And this again, the last several weeks um, before the new numbers came out, this was just from the prior inflation numbers. You know, he thinks it's going to continue to get worse, and and so he's going to move to cash. And he's suggesting that I do the same thing because we're the same age, and we're neighbors. Our house costs the same amount of money. And I was like, "Okay, and," and he's like, "That." What do you mean, and? That's that's it, those two reasons. And I was like, so you're going to make a financial decision to move to cash because you and your neighbor are the same age. I said, we're buddies, but that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> like, <laughs> they know, no, no other thought context around like, that you guys are the same age and you guys have the same, you know, house, the house costs the same amount of money. So maybe you make roughly the same amount on income, maybe. I was like, you don't know. If, I said, how, how much money does he owe? I don't know. So how much money does he have in you know in different accounts? I don't know. Well, so exactly, it's totally could be completely different from you. You know, yeah. Just talk to your talk to your advisor if you have one. Yeah. If you don't, find find one, one. That you can trust. Yeah. Tell him what you're thinking about. Right. Yeah. Tell him what you're thinking about, and then let him go. Okay, let's see if that's the right decision before you go to cash. Right. So uh, maybe some. I said maybe taking some to cash. Is not the worst idea, right? Depending on your on your setup, but again, you got to run those numbers to find out. And again, your neighbor or whomever might be also saying, "Yeah, I'm going all to cash," but really, he's not. You know, he's only going to do ten percent or, you know, something like that. So just again, make sure that you're doing, uh, you know, your due diligence on some of these things. So I, di- I digress. We'll get back into decision making roadblocks, but maybe it's just general confusion, Sean. That's another one. Like often, people just avoid it because. Anything related to finance scares the pajivas out of them. Well, yeah, and it's our industry is filled with jargon and acronyms and fancy talk to <laughs> alpha, that's, beta, that's, PD yeah, that's ratio. built to confuse people, yeah. and, and that that become that can become intimidating. And so, in a lot of cases, if if something's intimidating, you're like, well, I don't want to deal with that. That yeah, that's not something that I want to I want to go down that road and 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 deal with it at this point in time. So, yep. what do they do? They ignore it. They put their head down, they save, and hope everything works out. Yeah. I'll go play golf, and then I won't have to think about it, you know. Exactly. Or whatever. Yeah. So, and in general confusion, I think, sometimes kind of plays into uh, number four, which is just the concept of talking about money. Now, I think we're better about it over the last – you and I are, you know uh, – Gen Xers were right in that, you know, that 40, 50 range. I think uh, older generation, though, if you're, you know, over, let's say, 60, it's definitely – was a lot more taboo to even talk about money. I mean, mm-hmm. I know advisors that when their clients come in, first time potential clients, folks that are in their 60s or 70s, they're not even talking about money with themselves as, as a married couple, right? right? Because it's very, some people are just so uncomfortable about talking about money that it's it's virtually impossible to extract some information, yet they know they need help, but they're, they're like just a stone wall. Well, like what does money become in, in our country? It's become like a status tool. Uh, oh yeah, you know, been that way a long time. Yeah, it's all about status. And I've got a, a friend, and, and our, our kids happen to go to private school together, uh, the Catholic school here in Salt Lake. And she's like, "Look at the parking lot. Everybody drives these expensive cars." And like, so that doesn't mean that they have any wealth. It just means that they bought an expensive, expensive car. But yeah, they could have a lot of debt. Yeah, I mean, and and I know story after story uh, about things that have happened over there that it's like, oh, well. Yeah, sir. Makes sense. They, you know, they didn't have the wealth that they that they portrayed, and, and so what happens there is that when people don't want to talk about money, they don't want to deal with money, and it's seen as a status symbol. It's not viewed as a tool, and all money is is a tool to allow you to do the things that you want to do. Yep, exactly. And, and if you look at money that way and say, okay, if I need to, you know, if I need to build a, a home, I use a lot of different tools. If I need to fix my car, I, I use a lot of different tools. Well, that's all money is. There's there's different vehicles that you can invest in, use as tools to allow you to do the things that you want to do. And if you look at it that way, it becomes mm-hmm. much more easy to talk about talk about money. Yeah, and the first step is is you know 
then finding out you know which where when and where to use those tools and then yeah you right. don't, maybe don't view it quite so much and I get it some people are like well I want to be able to say you know that well it's kind of like my you know my point to the, my buddy earlier it's like talking about him and his friend it's like we you know you think you make the same amount of money but I mean you know are you truly telling your neighbor everything about your finances no because you're trying to gauge each other maybe it's a little you know or you don't want to feel like you're saying hey i you know i have less than you know is the keeping up with the joneses basically yep so exactly yeah. uh all right so final one uh when you're talking about things that kind of block us from making decisions uh when we run into unfortunately those traumatic life events and those things are going to happen sometimes there is some time in here to think and get some advice through these before we make big decisions, but it can certainly impede the progress when we got fired, got uh, downsized, got a divorce, or or even just lost our loved one. And all of these these events can't necessarily be you know avoided, but some of the angst when it comes to finance can be avoided. And, and, and these traumatic life events, we know that things are going to happen. We know that you know, life isn't going to always go as, as planned. And for this, you know, for this decision-making impediment, this is why in my mind, I don't care what age you are. It is extremely important to have clarity on what you can handle financially when it comes to planning, what your plan is going to look like. Do you have the, the cash saved? Do you have, you know, the, the rainy day savings funds? Have you built an insurance strategy? Have you done all these things? Because the one thing you don't want to have happen is that, in, in an emotional state and we don't want you to make financial decisions like big financial decisions. Right. So, right. So, you know, death being one, let's not make a decision for six months if we don't have to, or a year, that's even better. You know, if you lose a job, you know, make sure that, that you've built a strategy around, do I have the ability to, to catch my breath and then go out and look for a new job to where I'm not stressed that I have to t- take the next thing that comes, you know, or, or illnesses or, or what happens if we become divorced. You know, all those are financial situations that cause an, uh, emotions to happen anyways. So finance shouldn't be the, the catalyst that pushes you over the edge emotionally. That should be structured in a, in a way, in a way that you already understand the plan behind it. Yeah. So now you can kind of push that to the side. And if we can get through some of those other roadblocks, you probably, hopefully, will have some things already in place for the inevitable, right? For the mm-hmm. fact, especially with the death of a spouse, right? Uh, obviously, divorce is not something you're necessarily going to go into planning for because you're not assuming you're going to get divorced. But, you know, you can have some of those uh, different buckets or emergency funds in the event of a loss of a job, or maybe that's an insurance product that's helping you with something like that for income replacement or whatever the case is. But yeah, with some strategizing and some removal of some of these other roadblocks, hopefully you can have a few plans in place that when traumatic life events strike, you are better prepared and are not making those decisions under the emotional turmoil and mm-hmm. the financial crunch time. So there right. you go. That's our conversation this week. Hopefully that helps a little bit when thinking about making some important decisions. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you can do so. You can find all the information at elevatemyretirement.com. And you can also reach out to the team that way. Just stop by the website there. A lot of good tools, tips, and resources. Get on the calendar. Uh, schedule some time. Have a chat if you need to go through some of these things. If you know you've been not making some decisions and you need some help. Again, elevatemyretirement.com. You can find the podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, and all major platforms. Sean, thanks for hanging out, my friend. Appreciate your time as always. I'll talk to you after the 4th of July, so I hope you have a good 4th of July weekend. Sounds good. You too. We'll see you next time right here on Retirement Elevated with Sean Lee, Managing Partner at Elevated Retirement Group. Investment advisory services offered through Elevated Capital Advisors, LLC, and SEC Registered Investment Advisor.